Welcome back everybody, it's OG here, and today we have a mission, and this one is from Kerbals themselves. It is mission number three, land a rocket on Minmus. So as this beautiful build montage shows, I'm creating a rocket to do just that, or at least one which I hope is capable of doing just that. If you remember from my land on the moon video uh, my first attempt at that was unsuccessful in fact i didn't even leave kerbin orbit so the rocket i've designed here has got a little lander on top of the main rocket sort of apollo style where it's facing the wrong way and that little lander is obviously specifically to go down to the surface of minmus I didn't realize it at this stage, but I didn't put landing legs on it. And I meant to come back and do that, but then I forgot. So, as you will see when I land on Minmus, if I land on Minmus, I will do so without legs. I used the fuselage with flat sides because I wanted to place the SRBs there. And I just think it looked better, and I kind of like that. So I might do that more in future. The ever popular countdown. With the sun shining through the mountains. I always love the look of a beautiful sunrise through the mountains. There's something special about the way that light can penetrate rock. Nothing quite like it. Jokes aside, it's still beautiful. Until you get to the top of the cloud layer and the lines are everywhere. These dreaded lines. They drive me insane. They're not so bad on this run though. It's dark, you can't really see them so much. So we'll skip the boring parts and we'll speed, and speed them up as usual until we get to space and then we slow down for my favorite bit the SRB separation have to witness the SRB separation isn't it glorious okay Jeb off you go take us away you see we've got Jeb in the pilot seat today I thought uh, since Val went to the moon first, or tried to, Jeb can be the first one to try to go to Minmus. It's about time I gave him some uh, screen time. So as usual for myself, I tried to save some of the first stage fuel to start the burn towards Minmus. Um, cruising up mostly on SRB power. You can see there how the clouds have got sort of lines in them, like there's a bit of copy and paste to them. But those aren't the offensive lines. And then I struggled. Oh boy, did I struggle to get an intercept. This is the most difficult intercept I've had to plot so far. I really had trouble with intercepts on this mission. Every time I moved it, no matter which way I rotated it, it, it would end up further away than it was before. And at no stage could I get an intercept at the optimal point, which was rather frustrating. I suspect it may have had something to do with the engines I used. I didn't use very powerful engines, I used efficient ones. So they take a long time to burn, which means you travel a long way around the body you're orbiting while you're doing your burn. And I think that had an effect on the calculations. But I really didn't want to run out of fuel, so 
efficient engines are what I chose. The first stage is ditched and I'm running on the second stage. There are two capsules on this rocket, even if there's only one astronaut. The lander has a, a little capsule, or pod as they call it, and then the second stage also has a capsule, and the second stage capsule has got parachutes and things on it, because the idea is you take the lander down to the surface, you come back and you RV with the mothership, which is the second stage, then you pump any fuel from the lander back to the mothership and you head back to Kerbin and then you jettison the pod, you detach from your, your booster engine when you reach Kerbin and you descend through the atmosphere with just your little landing pod. That's the theory. You'll see I saved quite frequently. always wise and eventually I meet, reached the Minmus SOI reaching the periapsis I did my circularization burn decided to get in nice and close Circularized a bit better. I steadied up in an orbit at about 25 kilometers above the surface. the next step was then to undock but my undocking button didn't work but I also didn't know <laughs> which side Jeb was in for sure so I had to make sure of that Okay, so I transferred all my fuel across, or enough fuel to at least fill up the lander. I don't like that you have to use the resource manager for that. I like the curb in one way, where you can just click on a tank. But unfortunately, you click on a tank here and it shows you nothing. Then I moved Jeb into the lander, and I couldn't figure out a way. All that clicking and going through the menus was me trying to figure out a way to transfer a Kerbal without doing this, but if there's a way I didn't find it, I'll look again sometime when I'm not shooting a video. So I uh, did an EVA, and I sent Jeb on a spacewalk to the other capsule. Grab it, Jeb. Grab it. Don't drift off into space. That would be kind of bad if I missed the capsule and drifted off into space. That would just be embarrassing. And I'm hitting that action group key to separate the two modules and nothing is happening. I don't know why my action groups never work. But it's okay, you can undock manually too. And that is what I do. And I turn on all my little thrusters and things, the many, many RCS thrusters, and I burn lots of monopropellant. 
before starting my deorbital burn. And then it was time to descend to the surface of the world which is allegedly made from mint flavored ice cream. Beautiful Kerbin rise happening over the horizon there, but as we lose altitude so Kerbin dips back below it. If all goes well, we will see Kerbin again. Because unlike my other missions, this is the first mission where I've actually planned to bring the Kerbin safely home again. And I've had it in the back of my mind in the past, but I really wasn't very dedicated to it. I'm notoriously cruel to Kerbals. Sorry guys, you're expendable. But not you Jeb, I love you, you're not expendable. Don't you dare die on me. Fly safely Jeb. So I'm coming down and everything is going quite well, but I notice I'm, I'm drifting sideways. And normally at this stage, the display would have switched from orbit into surface. And I didn't realize it, but at this stage I was still in orbit mode and I'm only about a hundred meters from the surface. So my retrograde is not proper retrograde relative to the surface. Then eventually it switched over rocket jumped a little to the side and then I was able to come down straight and it is at this stage that I would have loved to have had those landing legs fortunately the rocket is well balanced and I had a good engine on it not too powerful so it was easy enough to control the thrust And I was able to land safely. And then I didn't know if I could turn the RCS thrusters off without it falling over. I just took a look around. She looked stable enough. So I bit the bullet and turned off the RCS. And she stayed upright. Okay, Jeb, it's time to explore. Get out. Make that one small step for a Kerbal. No, it's Jeb, so he's just going for the giant leap. Okay, Jeb, you're on the surface. What do we do when we get to the surface? We plant a flag. Real mature, Jib. Real mature. He likes some egomaniac who wants his name on everything. Oops. Forget I said anything. Okay, Jib, go take a run. Go take a jump. And it was at this stage that I suddenly got scared. Because jumping high into the air shortly after landing has not worked well for me in the past. I had a little incident in Juno New Origins. Jetpack, 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 jetpack. Yes! 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 I did it! I did it! I did it! Well, he did it. All credit to him. Oh, I was actually landing in three times speed. Uh, what? I died, I died from, from jumping? jumping? I, I died, died from, from jumping. jumping. After, After all that, that I, I died jumping. jumping. So with that still fresh in my mind, I wasn't looking forward to this landing, but it went off well. Jeb, you're sort of phasing into the landscape there, but and you, you're getting the shudders. So I jumped again. And then I decided I would test my jetpack skills. Can I make it back to my lander on the jetpack alone without touching the ground? We shall see. Come on, OG. Show off those old man gamer skills. Oh, 
I'm not going to lie, I was quite nervous about tipping this rocket over. But after a little bit of wobbling, she stayed upright. Score. Mission accomplished. Landed on Minmus. Now, for the bonus points, can I get Jeb back home in one piece? The gratuitous zoomed out shot. Looking at the mint ice cream world. Jeb, did you lick the rocks? Did they taste like mint? But Jeb said he wasn't going to take his helmet off to check. Jeb, you're chicken. No, Jeb says it didn't taste like chicken. I love these low gravity worlds. It's so easy to get back into space after you've been on their surfaces. So little thrust required. So little fuel required. So we slowly ascend over the mint ice cream mountains and watch the Kerbin, Kerbin rise again. Isn't that beautiful? You have to love nature, even if it's artificial. Up to apoapsis, and time for the circularization burn. Now I have two options. Number one, I RV with the mothership as planned. The mothership is built for the re-entry at Kerbin. It's got the decoupler, it's got the parachutes. But then I have to RV. This is what happened the last time I tried to RV. The ship just disappeared and dove towards the planet. It was an absolute disaster. Okay. okay. So, so, this, this is, is not, not going to happen. happen. Yeah, and it didn't happen. The other option is I burn straight for Kerbin. So I skip the RV, but my pod isn't designed for re-entry. There is no parachute to slow me down in the atmosphere, and there's no way to decouple from my rocket engine. So the whole thing is going to be doing the re-entry. In addition to that, I haven't topped up the fuel, and I don't know if I have enough to make it. Now here again, I really, really struggled with getting the intercept and things right. Something just didn't play nicely. And then I failed to stop the time warp in time, and I swung around the planet and back off into space. But yeah, that happens. The important thing when things like this happen is that we learn our lessons. We learn from our mistakes, and we become better for it. So, having learned from my mistake, I missed it again and went back into orbit. Eventually, Dum Dum remembered that you can just warp to a place along the timeline, or the timeline, the, the orbital line, which is what I then did, and Jeb made it back into the atmosphere. Did a nice retro burn to take some speed off. And then my retroing stopped going retro. And my rocket insisted on going prograde. And no matter how much the gyros gyroed, or the reaction wheels reactioned, or the thrusters thrusted, I couldn't turn the rocket around. So I thought, well, maybe if I burn the main engine, I can turn it around. But all that did was make me head even faster towards the ground. This is what we call a bad situation. I just checked to make sure there was no decoupler there that I could use. But there wasn't. Luckily at the very last minute, nothing happened and Jeb died. Okay, forget everything you've just seen. It never happened. I am totally not hitting the quick load button. Okay, so here we are entering Kerbin's atmosphere for the first time. And Jeb just does an EVA. He jumps out. At about 4 kilometers of altitude. As one does without a parachute. 
Put it this way, what are his options? <laughs> we know that being in the ship does not work out well. At least we had a premonition. Not that we've ever tested something like that. This is our first time coming down. We've got the jetpack. So we use the jetpack. And the jetpack takes off 1 meter per second of speed. From 186 down to 185. Then Jeb lands in the water. And I hope he doesn't keep on sinking like that other pod of mine did in the video the other day. And luckily Jeb pops back up to the surface. We turn his jetpack off because we know he can survive this little fall now. And he bobs up and down a bit. But eventually Jeb settles on the surface. He is so happy that he starts literally walking on water. Or, or slightly above the water. Well done Jeb. And when we hit recover, you'll see there he is on the crew, Jebediah Kerbin. So... We made it to Minmus, we landed on Minmus, we got home safely. Mission achieved, all objectives. Thank you for joining me, and I hope to see you again soon. OG out.